Thank you, Secretary Chow, for addressing us. I want to associate myself first with many of the comments that Congresswoman Esty made in presenting uh, Ranking Member DeFazio's statement and also some of the comments of Chairman Schuster and other colleagues who have highlighted some of the issues or concerns that they have with the administration's infrastructure package. You know, unfortunately, I believe the administration has ducked the tough decisions that Congress must make. Decisions on how to shore up the Highway Trust Fund and how to move towards a sustainable path for infrastructure investment. Secretary Chow, I'm concerned that your proposal undermines a key priority of mine to fund the nation's system of goods movement. I think I was glad to hear uh, Congressman Denham mention goods movement. Perhaps you've heard the phrase, freight doesn't vote, which explains why a dedicated freight funding has been so hard for Congress to deal with and hopes very hard to be won in Congress. The administration's infrastructure plan proposes, as I understand, a $100 billion grant program over 10 years that the states and cities can compete for at a 20% federal share. This additional funding, however, is now paired with a presidential budget request that cuts $122 billion from the Highway Trust Fund over 10 years. You know, as you know, the Highway Trust Fund provides a dedicated formula grants or dedicated formula grants for freight programs, as well as discretionary grants through the infra program. This uh, proposed budget significantly scales back both. The President's budget also eliminates the highly oversubscribed TIGER program, which has made key intermodal investments, including $30 million to improve, to improve the flow of commerce at the, both the ports of LA and Long Beach. So I, the question I have is, given the nation's staggering needs <coughs> to improve freight movement and relieve congestion, how does your administration's plan advance freight projects while at the same time eliminating guaranteed and, de and dedicated funding for freight? Freight is very important, obviously, and you bring up a very good point, and I don't have an answer for you. I should. So if you would, uh, let me get back to you on that, but you bring up a very important point. And I, and I, I am remiss not being able to answer it. Thank you, and I hope while you're looking at it, you look at a proposal that I put forth on HR 3001, mm -hmm. which establishes a sustainable, dedicated freight trust fund. It would make sure that we have the resources to deal with these critical investments, and I think it's consistent with what we've talked about before in terms of user fees, and I think that it would be, uh, I'd like you at least to, to, to address that issue. Also, next question, Secretary Chow, is the administration that has said that it would like to reduce, and we've heard it here today, the environmental permitting process from 10 years to two years. Yet according to SEEK, the overwhelm of the Council on Environmental Quality, the overwhelming majority of federal projects that require environmental review that's approximately 95% of those projects, proceed under categorical exclusions and are exempt from the most rigorous types of environmental review. Less than 1% of the projects require a more rigorous environmental impact statement, the EIS, and according to the Federal Highway Administration, the average length of that review is less than four years. What I don't understand is given these statistics, why does President Trump insist that it takes 10 years to go through the permitting process for a transportation project? Uh, first of all, uh, we're not talking about environmental permitting. We're just talking about permitting overall. As mentioned, we have no, we all want to protect the environment. But there are ways in which the permitting process is duplicative. It doesn't make sense just from a process point of view that we hope we can address. The permitting process also not, include, not only includes federal, but state and local. And the process could take 10 years, yes. but our part can be maybe a portion of that. So one example is in Alaska. Uh, we I went up to Alaska in August, and it just so happened that uh, the permitting process for the Sterling Highway came through after a 35-year delay, and it came from Interior. So, are there not ways we are asking ourselves, with input from the Congress, 
on how we can improve the permitting process. So many of these projects, uh, tr infra transportation infrastructure projects that need to be repaired, improved, can actually begin construction and improvement. That's what we're talking Thank about. Thank you. And Thank just you. as I yield back, I will submit in writing. Uh, I'm concerned about the delays and uncertainty <coughs> regarding the new starts program. I will submit that, especially about the Orange County streetcar, which has gone through everything and is ready to go. And also, I concur with uh, Congresswoman Napolitano regarding the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles and the need for infrastructure improvement. Thank you, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman, and uh, I have not seen your proposal on 